Europa. No, I'm not talking about that silly rock band from the 80s. I'm talking about the satellite or the moon of Jupiter. Today we're going to try to terraform it and we're going to find out the science and the difficulties behind this process. Welcome to What The Math, enjoy the video. And so in today's video, we're going to be terraforming the satellite of Jupiter known as Europa, which is right here. This is a suggestion by a person by the name of Ethan Elliot Geyer, who messaged me on Facebook and um, told me that apparently I haven't done this before. And I figured, you know what? There is actually quite a lot of scientific facts I can talk about uh, by doing this video, so I decided to do it. Now, why Europa? Well, you're actually going to find out why not other satellites, like for example, Io, uh, Ganymede, or Callisto, which are somewhere right there. So there's Callisto, there's Ganymede and Io. And I'm going to explain to you why we chose Europa, but we're actually going to do other satellites as well at some point. But Europa is actually the preferred location for colonization of the human species in the Jovian or Jupiter-based system. Now, if you look around, Jupiter has a lot of moons. As a matter of fact, there's uh, at least 67 we found, possibly more that we haven't discovered yet. But most of them are kind of tiny. Most of them are actually captured asteroids. Um, or objects that are just not particularly friendly uh, or just are a little bit too tiny. Like, for example, Almathea right here is just a little bit too small. But three moons of uh, Jupiter, specifically Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, are interesting because they may actually have a very large liquid ocean underneath all of this ice on the surface. And where there is water or liquid water, there might be life or there might be at least a possibility for a really nicely colonizable um, object for our human species. Now let's actually go into the uh, much bigger simulation that actually has the sun around, uh, around it. And we're going to choose this one right here, solar system with major moons. This will actually give us um, the four Jovian... Uh, moons, which are Io, Callisto, Europa, and Ganymede, and they're going to be orbiting around Jupiter. These are the four moons that Galileo discovered back in the 17th century using his um, handmade, homemade telescope. But we're going to focus on Europa, of course. And so let's uh, maybe talk about some of the ways we can colonize this beautiful planet. So first of all, this is ice with a very, very large, very thick liquid ocean underneath. So uh, this particular object actually has a huge amount of water, way, way, way more than Earth does. And uh, there's actually um, a very deep ocean underneath this ice shell. And the ice shell is possibly something like 10 kilometers in thickness. But one of the ways we can actually start colonizing this particular object is by uh, somehow warming up this ice and uh, releasing some of the um, gas or water vapor into the atmosphere and start creating some kind of a atmospheric pressure. So currently there's actually nothing here, but with time, if we uh, find a way to maybe redirect a few asteroids, and let's actually maybe collide an asteroid or two with uh, Europa. Uh, if we bring asteroids from the asteroid belt and we collide them with Europa, uh, we might be able to warm it up just a little bit uh, and cause um, some of the ice to start basically uh, vaporizing and to get released into the atmosphere. We can then maybe use uh, things like electrolysis, uh, which is the process of electrolyzing water, uh, to release oxygen because uh, water is H2O, so if you put some electricity into water, it releases H2 and O2. So this is how we can start creating oxygen and uh, create a bit of an atmosphere here, but we'll actually, we'll have to keep this planet relatively cold because if we raise the temperature here to above zero degrees Celsius, unfortunately the ice will melt. And if the ice melts, this is what's going to happen. This whole planet will actually begin to melt or the surface of this planet will begin, begin to melt. So I'm going to show you what happens if you actually collide too many asteroids. And um, this will actually turn into water world. We don't want a water world. We can't really survive in a water world unless we start building um, water cities on on these uh, on the surface of this moon. I keep calling it a planet. It's not a planet. It's a moon. This is a moon of Jupiter. Uh, but so if you collide enough asteroids, well, first of all, it's going to start vaporizing uh, and exploding and stuff. But at some point, the temperature here will actually increase to the point where this will very likely melt. Uh, this game is, for some reason, being difficult with me right now, and it's not letting me decrease or increase the temperature to a certain point. But I'm going to see if I can do this by essentially adding a little bit of atmospheric pressure. So let's just say we're released 
enough gases to create uh, one atmospheric pressure on the surface here. And we now actually have just enough for us to sort of breathe normally. And we can actually achieve this uh, without even colliding asteroids. We can maybe bring super big mirrors that will reflect uh, sunlight, which is somewhere over there, uh, onto the surface of this um, moon. Or we can maybe even bring nuclear weapons and just nuke everything, because that also works. Uh, but basically, yeah, once we release enough atmosphere, we will be able to actually breathe without any need for a gas mask or anything like that. But before uh, we actually start breathing, we need to also introduce a bit of nitrogen in the system because our air on Earth is about 75% 70 uh, nitrogen with only about 24% oxygen. So we need to actually get some nitrogen going here. And to do this, we might need to find a way to convert the ammonia that's present on this moon uh, to basically release N2, to release nitrogen and to then introduce it into the atmosphere. All of this can be possible through various uh, um, chemical reactions, through var various um, electrochemical reactions, or by bringing a special type of uh, uh, bacteria that can actually start converting stuff for us and create a lot of nitrogen, some oxygen, and so on and so forth. So let's just say we did all of that and now we have atmosphere that we can actually breathe. But all of this newly introduced atmosphere will obviously increase the um, the surface temperature a little bit because it will now create a bit of a greenhouse effect. So this moon will acquire a little bit of temperature and uh, it will not be as cold as before. But nevertheless, because it's so far away from the sun, it's still going to be pretty cold and it's still going to stay solid. Now, I actually increased the surface temperature to two atmospheres just to increase the uh, greenhouse effect a little bit more because we want this to be just under zero degrees Celsius. We don't want this uh, moon to be too cold. We want to be able to survive on this comfortably. Let's actually increase this a little bit more even. Maybe three atmospheres. Now, it seems that the way the game calculates the heat here or the temperature is a little bit too extreme. So I actually have to increase the surface temperature, uh, surface pressure to about 400 atmospheres for uh, the temperature, or actually even more. Let's go to a thousand. So for the temperature, for the temperature on the surface to be uh, reasonably uh, acceptable. So right now it's about the temperature of Ant Antarctica, which is still a little bit too cold. Uh, but let's just say we're going to keep it here. Now here is the problem with this particular uh, situation. You can see the atmosphere is actually smoking away, and this is because uh, the sun right there is tripping the atmosphere away from from this moon. This moon has almost no, or actually it doesn't have any magnetic field. The only magnetic field it receives is from Jupiter. Jupiter obviously has a very, very strong magnetic field. Uh, the strongest magnetic field other than the solar magnetic field. And you can see it right there. It actually covers the entire area here. This magnetic field is one of the reasons why Jupiter creates a lot of radiation on the surface of Europa. We're going to talk about this in a second, but uh, Europa is essentially unprotected from the solar radiation and is kind of also affected uh, by Jupiter to the point where there's a huge, huge, huge amount of stuff that can be uh, completely destroyed and um, thrown off the planetary surface. In other words, this moon is going to be losing a lot of a lot of atmosphere. So we need to find a way to create artificial um, magnetic field, magnetosphere. There's actually at least one paper I read that pr um, provided a really cool description for uh, concentric rings you can build around an object. And then once you actually start running electricity through this particular object, you can create at least 10% um, of magnetic field of Earth, which is usually quite enough on farther away objects to actually survive. So let's just say we do that and we create just a little bit of magnetosphere here. That will give us just a bit of protection from uh, the solar radiation and from, I guess, Jupiter radiation. And we'll start protecting the atmosphere of this moon as well. Now, at this point, uh, this atmosphere should not escape anymore, so I'm not sure why it's actually doing this. But uh, let's just say we prevented the atmospheric escape by constructing artificial magnetosphere. So we're now kind of sort of pro uh, protected from two things. One is from losing the atmosphere, which is important. And two is from essentially being irradiated by a huge amount of radiation from Jupiter and from, uh, from the Sun. And the thing is, it's really important for us to be protected from this radiation because Jupiter actually uh, has a tremendous amount of radiation that it, it inflicts on the surface of this planet. Um, and here, if you just stand on the surface, you receive about 540 rem or REM, which is the unit for radiation, per day. If you're standing on Earth right now, you only receive about 50 per year. 
In other words, there's about 4,000 uh, times more radiation uh, that you receive just by being on the surface of Europa. And this, of course, creates a problem. You need to somehow protect yourself from this, and so Magnetosphere might protect us just a little bit, but maybe not enough. And so there's actually a solution to this problem. And the solution is that, well, because we know there is possibly liquid water underneath, and because we know the surface of this moon will still be very cold even if we try to warm it up and even if we try to basically make a more realistic value of, like, let's just say three atmospheres of atmospheric pressure on the surface, it's still very, 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 very likely that... Uh, it's going to be too cold for us to live on the surface, but for liquid water, the temperature has to be about zero degrees Celsius. And as you can see, it kind of stopped, stopped smoking now. So what the proponents of colonization of Europa say is that, well, we could actually drill into the surface. Let's just drill with an asteroid. Boom. That was too fast. Dr uh, drilling uh, into the surface of this moon, go under the ice sheet and build um, essentially cities and colonies underneath all of this in some kind of an air pocket that can essentially create uh, a very well protected uh, city for us build in ice so basically an ice city inside of this ice shell and it will be actually comfortable temperatures because deep inside of this object underneath all of this ice where li liquid water exists there has to be a more comfortable temperature because liquid water only exists uh, at specific temperatures so it would be still kind of chilly but it would not be super freezing cold like you see right here minus 124 degrees celsius which is way colder than, than anywhere on earth and obviously those cities would also be protected uh, from the radiation of jupiter they would also be protected from uh, radiation from the sun uh, the atmosphere in there can be um, artificially replenished, you can use the water, the liquid water to drink, you can also use the liquid water to create energy and to create more oxygen, but most importantly what you could do is start looking for all kinds of life that might be present there if there is liquid water, because we know that Europa has all of the necessary components for, uh, for life, including possibly the heat source somewhere inside of the uh, moon. So it's very likely that one day, if we actually find life um, anywhere in our solar system, it might be actually right here. But there is, however, one problem with uh, living in those uh, bases, and this is actually what I just did. The problem is this. Uh, all of the moons of Jupiter and Jupiter itself receive quite a lot of collisions from various asteroids at all times. And when this happens, it's very likely that underneath the surface, some sort of... Um, uh, internal tsunami might actually destroy the city that we build. So we have to be really, really careful about making sure that the actual uh, city that we build is uh, essentially tsunami-proof or wave-proof that it doesn't get destroyed when a collision occurs on the surface of Europa. But anyway, so that's of course a more realistic um, colony that we could build. It would be underneath the ice. But what if we actually warm up this uh, object just enough for us to create uh, livable conditions on the surface. Essentially, what if we make this into a water world? And this is what I'm doing right now. I'm creating a water world by essentially colliding hundreds and hundreds of asteroids with uh, Europa. Now, it's quite possible for us to create a water world here, uh, basically through redirecting asteroids from the asteroid belt and from essentially possibly using even nuclear weapons and make this a relatively warm world with a temperature of about 20 to 30 degrees uh, Celsius. But of course, this will be a world with a notion that's about 100 kilometers deep. That's about 60 to 70 miles deep. That is a very, very deep ocean. It's about 10 times as deep as the deepest uh, trench on our own planet Earth, which is the Mariana Trench. That, of course, means that we have to create a technology for us to basically have some sort of uh, cities that are basically float on the surface, which is not something we know how to do just yet. But, you know what? Since uh, our species was able to create things like Great Pyramid of Giza and other humongous objects that we currently have on Earth, I don't really see why one day we wouldn't be able to create a floating city on the surface of Europa. So this is definitely something we could create one day, but of course the problem is that we would also need to uh, somehow create um, an operational magnetosphere to protect Europa from radiation and from losing the atmosphere, and also find a way to uh, create a permanent warm atmosphere here, which would be relatively difficult because Europa is really, really, really far away um, from the sun. So the sun here is very, very dim. It would not provide enough energy to uh, consistently warm up this moon. 
But this is the challenge we might uh, consider tackling in the future. But for now, I guess the best strategy is for us to drill inside of Europa and to create cities underneath the ice and basically colonize it that way. But I guess to truly terraform this particular moon, or I guess to truly turn this into a livable Earth-like sort of object, we would have to introduce a lot, a lot more um, silicates and essentially rocks. So if we were to bring a lot of asteroids, including objects like Ceres, from the asteroid belt and basically smack them into this particular moon of Jupiter and increase its actual mass dramatically, this would create just enough uh, surface area to basically uh, create continents on the surface. Now, this is an extreme scenario where we basically bombard this uh, moon for like years and years and years and we re redirect many, 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 many different asteroids toward it, including Ceres, and uh, basically decrease the amount of water or water propulsion to the point where it becomes... Um, a structure that has both continents and liquid on the surface. So let's try to do that. You can see water kind of increasing. So we're going to keep bombarding this. Uh, we might not actually have enough mass in the asteroid belt to do all of this, but let's just say we bring more from other locations as well, or maybe we combine some of the moons of Jupiter together, making it so that the actual surface here becomes a lot uh, more Earth-like with a lot less water on average. So I'm just going to kind of cheat a little bit and decrease the water level to about 0.7%. Basically, we brought a lot, a lot of rocks. Making this object a lot bigger in size as well. And essentially, we're now going to see uh, how much we can uh, increase the temperature here, making this possibly a livable world. And not surprisingly, within a few weeks here, we're going to actually see the results of our creation. So you can see the ice is melting, the planet or the moon is still kind of a little bit too cold actually, uh, or too hot in some areas, too cold in other areas, but this will change any minute now. I think I may actually have added too much atmosphere here. Let's just decrease that value because the temperature is going up too fast. So this is about, this is going to be about 10 atmospheric pressures here. Basically the same pressure you would experience if you were underwater um, at a depth of approximately 100 meters. It's actually not too bad. 10 atmospheres is like nothing. Uh, all right, so uh, it's going to warm up just enough. We're going to accelerate time and we're going to see if we've actually been able to create any kind of um, continents here. Because that's essentially the point of combining this moon with a lot of other objects and to essentially recreate uh, this as a kind of a world for our species to live on. Now obviously this kind of a scenario would require some really advanced technologies like uh, manipulation of asteroids, manipulation of other moons, redirection of other moons, and a lot of other things that we don't really know how to do just yet. But since this is the future we're talking about, maybe one day we'll figure this all out. I'm going to decrease water just a little bit just to give you an idea of what the surface of this moon might look like if it had continents on it. So here we go. This is going to be quite interesting to see. I'm going to decrease this just a little bit more. And there we go. There's going to be a few oceans here, a few interesting uh, islands. But for the most part, this is actually a world of uh, unknown terrain and colonization to, to be uh, done. Essentially here we can now establish a very large colony and uh, since this is already a terraform world, very very earth-like. As, as a matter of fact, the valley here is about 78% earth similarity. I believe it's really only missing a little bit of magnetosphere which I erased previously. And this has actually now increased the ch chance of life to about 36%, which is actually very, very good. It means that this is quite a survivable world. We can totally live here and enjoy our lives. So this is a, a terraformed, colonizable Europa. And if you look really closely, you might even be able to see what seems to be plant life now. I don't know if this is actually me just imagining things or Europa actually forming life, but for all we know, this is actually what's happening. Well, hopefully now you know how to terraform Europa and you know how difficult it actually is uh, to the point where we might not be able to do it at all. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Share this video with your friends and possibly consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me get better equipment. I'll see you guys in the next video. These birds are really, really loud. Bye-bye.